finish it, boss, because I think we're going to be late. Yes, that's what I'm hoping for. Hey, DJ Cloud is here. Yeah. Huh? Man, he's out of sight. Oh, thanks for getting us tickets to such a great concert, boss. So come on, we really have to leave. Uh, I still can't believe me it. Me neither. I must have a wire crossed. DJ Claude is bad. Mega test. Ow! <laughs> what a night I'm in for. Oh. Who'd have thought I'd get to see DJ Claude in the flesh? See you tomorrow, Decibel, if I don't have a resistor attack first. Oh. Bye, Don Michele. Enjoy yourself. Have you nearly finished there, Mick? I've got a surprise for you. Ah, uh, yeah, nearly done, Desi. A surprise, eh? I love surprises. Now, then, where's that contract? I had it a minute ago. Aha! In the waste paper basket, of course. Best filing system there is. Ah! Who put the lights out? A microphone could do himself an injury. You OK? Fine. I've got an exclusive on the Ronaldo signing, eh? That's enough huh? work for today. All I want oh, is a yeah. romantic dinner for two, Mick. No! Nothing I'd like more. Wild horses couldn't drag me away, Desi. Excuse me? Yes, hello? The Industrial Revolution. I'll be there in a microsec, Mac. Gotta run. But you've forgotten something, Mick. Your pizza! Ah! Desi, here. Hold on. What's wrong? What did I say? Thank you, final vibe, man. The whole audio funny party must be here tonight. Come on, boss. Let's go up and say hello. Oh, why do they have to play it so loud? My micro circuitry is melting. Are you listening? Sorry, can't hear you. But I'm glad you like it, boss. It's great, isn't it? Uh, hey, would you mind lowering the volume, huh? I can't hear you, man! I can't stand this racket. I make sure you hear me. Well, hey! stop yelling that speaker. The feedback I that told is... you to turn this racket down! Yeah! Ah! All right, but not so loud, boss man. Oh, I want to show you something, Mick. That's my ancestor, Mac Cotton. He was in the textile industry. What's that contraption behind him for, then, Mac? Making popcorn? Oh, I love popcorn. No, Mac, it's a steam engine. Mac Cotton lived in England in the 18th century, around oh. the time of the Industrial Revolution. Good old England. I was wondering when we do a story from my homeland. Here we are. An industrial age of discoveries and inventions, mainly due to a series of coincidences. Corinne, weren't we due to have a son about yes, now? Yes, I think you're right, Will. Who could that be at this time? Oh, Ooh. look, thank you, Mrs Stork. What a beautiful baby. Very like Mama and Papa. And he can already say Mama and Papa. Isn't he adorable? Oh. What shall we call him? Sebastian? Oh. Very all right, Goody it is then. Goody it is. Ow! Thanks, Goody. An increase in births meant an increase in population, and English cities grew larger and larger. Are you sure? That's not my baby. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Cool, even the wheat grows fast. I'll be safe up here. Ah, oh, aggressive fruit. Now, come on, lads. I thought an apple a day kept the doctor away. Ah, oh, oh. For a few successive years, the harvests were excellent. So with an abundance of food and improving health conditions, the population kept growing and growing. But at the heart of the Industrial Revolution was steam power. Will, you'll never amount to anything if you sit staring at that steaming pot all day. Do you hear me? Maybe if I put more wood on the fire. What's that? The world's first pressure cooker? Hey, come on now, I was only joking. Ah! Leave it out, I'm not a carrot, you know. Oh. With a few alterations, that might just work. Once converted, one steam engine could do the work of many horses and quicker. Machines were brought in everywhere to replace animals. Did you hear that? He said that pile of steaming scrap iron is going to replace us. <laughs> <laughs> the thing looks like it's about to explode. Now what, so? Oh! Look out Whoa! below! There you are, boys. Told you it was useful. You're, You're a genius, genius. bravo! bravo. What, what an invention. invention! Well, I told you something would explode, didn't I? The development of steam power and coal mining led to the creation of the railway system, which opened its first line in 1825 and had soon spread throughout the whole country. It's some network! 
Where's t'other engine? You've really started something with these trains. The rate you're going will be eating and drinking trains before you know it. What? Oh, you see? Ooh. Trains, trains, trains. That's all I hear. The next thing I know, you'll start bringing them into the house. Eh? Hey. Oh! Hey, look, it's Buster Keaton, eh? Oh, of course, it was a silent film star. Very light, big choo-choo. Well, I hope hey. you're satisfied now, you and your trains. Towns! Don't be unreasonable, love. At least it's a free ride. The invention of new machines created such a boom that Will and my ancestor, Matt Cotton, organised a great exhibition to show off all the technical advances. Microphones! There are so many inventions! No wonder they call this the Industrial Revolution. Businessmen were fascinated by the inventions, knowing they could make huge profits if they used a machine to do the work of ten men. Just think of the increased productivity. You'll be rich! Good day, gentlemen. My name's Harry Scum, and this is my invention for horseless carriage. Stop, bless you, and I'll take you to the scrapping. Ooh, ah! Look out! Ah! What a good idea, a car that follows you everywhere. Should save a fortune on parking. Ha <laughs> ha! Hello, my name's Tyrant Power, and I've made something really useful. An iron bridge. Want to cross? If I get wet again, it's me who'll be cross. Don't worry, the bridge is made of iron. It's completely safe. What if you have to take it apart? The bridge can be dismantled simply by removing the screws. Yuri, light little worms! Uh -oh. Oh. 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 oh! you horrid brute! Mm. Don't mm. do that. My name is James Phillips, and my invention, the electric light bulb, will dazzle the world. Remarkable! Oh, can I touch no. it? No! Ah. No, Guri! Yuri, uh. light! Mama! Uh. Mama, light! Which goes to show you should never play around with electricity. Oh, my word! Despite the fact that some were ahead of their time, not all the inventions got the credit they deserve. Some folk call it the idiot box, but I like to think of it as a conduit for culture. What's young fellow doing? Asking if he can leave the room, isn't he? What's this thing used for, Mr Big Ed? Sounds, coloured pictures, adverts for breakfast cereal, whatever you like. What nonsense. I'd rather have a nice cup Hey, what was that? Let's move along to the next inventor. Hold on! I've got some else. This is a Tamagotchi, a kind of virtual pet, see? Wait! Wait! Oh, Robert Philistine! <laughs> if he invented the TV, who invented the TV camera? I don't know, sometimes this series has no logic at all. <laughs> In the midst of all this technology was a game played by the workers, a game that would have a real impact on society and become the most popular in the land. Football! It's old Ginge and his mates. Nice to see some familiar faces. Uh -huh. Ah, now that's what I call an invention. A game which can entertain everyone. And it's perfectly harmless. Oh! Ooh, I'm sick of getting soaked. I'll show you. So that's how water polo was invented. Ah, uh, maybe. Yeah. It certainly packs a wallop. She's not such a drip as I thought. With uh -huh. their jobs threatened by mechanisation, some workers formed a team, the Sporting Eager Beavers, to demand oh. better pay and conditions. Such was football's popularity that it soon became the king of sports. That Stanley Accrington's a great goalkeeper, an Accrington acrobat, you might say. Ah! The sport caused a real commotion in England. Oh, there's nothing like scoring a few hundred goals, wouldn't you say, Tom? Oh, you're right, Terrell. No fuss, no bother. It's it's really the top a great, great shot, Tom. Is it true? It's Clutch is United wanted to sign your goalkeeper, Stanley Accrington. Nobody wants to join the dark side of the force. <laughs> Blasted asthma. They all want to play football. Give me the rule book and your life will be spared. Don't play with me. I know you have it, Earthman. I, I, I don't know anything. Please, I don't know anything. Lies. We'll meet again in the final episode of this series. The businessmen who paid low wages and took huge profits formed their own club, Exploiters United. Those sporting eager beavers are gonna be stopped, men. We gotta crush them. I want this team to be a real money-making, a playmaking goal machine. Yes, yes sir. Sir. sir! This bloke's a tough coach. His name's Giraffe Charlton. Come on, let's do it! Look out! Oh! Ah! Oh! Hey! Oh, hang on! Actually, this is a lot of fun. The train now leaving, platform five. Oi, what are you lot doing? I said a goal machine, not some kind of steam engine like... Oi, mind me! Don't blow me 
Ledger was just starting to enjoy it too. I thought this is what he meant by training. Uh, my first train trip and it derailed. Oh, this is going to be tough. Really tough. Really tough. An inventor himself, Giraffe Charlton, used his knowledge of mechanical engineering to help his fledgling team. Holy hand now. This is more mechanised than I bargained for. Here we go. All right, Big Ed. Let's see how you like these days then. <laughs> hey, hey. Hey! Oh! Boy, get away from me! If he had any sense, he'd step to one side and... Ah! The eager beavers were also training hard. Right, now we have to be good in the air. If we can win the ball in the air, we can control the whole game. No problem. Well, you've heard of microlight aircraft. Ah! Oh, time for a crash landing! The aerial game's not so easy. No, it's not, and Coach Little Billy searched everywhere for a player to fulfil that role. All right, next, off you go. Aha! Football man's here. Right. Uh. I don't understand it. Let me look at that. Oh, no. It's Ballsite. What saboteur put Ballsite in the ball? Ballsite makes me as weak as a kitten. By gum, when Lex Luthor saw me them balls, he said they were the best money could buy. He must read the wrong comics. Uh, oh, no. I was about to score and you yelled Korma? I hate to be the first to say it, that bucket, but I think this Anyone can see it, the ball was hey, out. Oh. It's no good either. Yeah. Well, it. it looked out to me. Come on, come and get a winning game. Ah, gum. Right now. Yeah. There were so many arguments that Little Billy decided to consult an expert. Thank goodness Mr. Bell invented this device. It really is marvellous. Hello, my cut on it. Little Billy, could you come down? I've got a problem. I think you can help me. Aye, aye. There's your ancestor, Mac. I see. Ah. Defenders commit too many fouls in this area, so not enough goals are being scored. Am I right? From now on, those fouls will be penalised by a shot at goal from this spot, which we'll call a penalty. And this area we'll call the penalty area. That's in the rules of the game. This was how it was decided to penalise the most serious fouls committed in the penalty area. A fitting what? punishment for the offending team. Ow! Oh, that's not fair! No goal, Mr. Striker. The ball must be stationary when kicked. And it must be on this spot marked 11 metres from the goal to be valid. You'll have to take it again. The players took some time to get used to taking penalties. Not yet, son. All other players must be outside the penalty area at a minimum of 9.15 metres behind the penalty spot. That's the distance marked by this semicircle. Now, I won't give the signal to take the penalty until you're all correctly positioned. It's in the rules of the game. Come on, get on with it. At this rate, we'll be lucky if we see a kick before the next European Cup final. That doesn't <laughs> exist yet. I know, man. That's what I mean. Ah! No, this time you don't gotcha! The goalkeeper moved off his line before the ball had been kicked. Remember now, Stanley, you can move along your line, but not move off it, lad. Mac, if he hadn't saved it and I'd scored, would the goal be valid? Of course, because it would be unfair to penalise the penalty taker. It wasn't long before Exploiters United and Sporting Eager Beavers faced each other head on. A contest that was more than just a game. Big difference between first class travel and the way the workers arrive. That's how it was, Mick. The difference in classes was apparent even at the stadium. Microphones, I haven't got a ticket yet. Aha! Now then. I'll see if my press pass will get me in. Here we are, then. There. Not valid. Leave quietly. Due to the rivalry between the teams, a highly sophisticated security and surveillance operation was employed at the ground. What exactly are we doing here, Holmes? Elementary, my dear Watson, in a game like this, there's so much at stake. We're here to keep an eye on the criminal fraternity. Come. He's right. I'm gonna pop every ball in the stadium. Ew. Every one. That's arch criminal Jack the Popper. Holmes and Watson have got their work cut out. Welcome to Big Match Football. There are exactly five minutes and 42.31 seconds left until kickoff. Here they are, the teams are coming out. Listen to that roar. Here come the exploiters to an enthusiastic reception from their fans. <laughs> and here come the officials making their way onto the pitch. Oh, look, Gloomy, look, there's your papa! papa. Oh. It was clear from the start. Both coaches had a lot to teach their players. So three twos are eight. Oh, I'm all plus at mouth. This game will be red hot. And... Oh, it's... 
Now time for the kickoff, as it's now exactly five o'clock. The exploiters used their natural instincts, which were naturally not at all sporting. Come on, Pistol. Uh, don't be a stick in the mud. <laughs> oh, oh. Referee, that's cheating by gum. Huh. Well, <laughs> apart from anything else, it's litter. <laughs> this kid's a scream. Both teams employed similar tactics. In fact, this match provided a good example of how the long ball game can lead to stalemate. Isn't anyone going to shoot? Attack, attack! 14 minutes and 32.4 seconds into the first half, and it's still nil-nil, with both teams getting a bit bogged down. Not all at once, Brenner! Oh, you scully no. With so much tension, things were bound to end in tears. Come here! And oh. with a penalty. Penalty! How oh, come? I didn't even touch him. It doesn't matter, Tespot. Trying to foul an opponent is the same as fouling him. Even so, that foul were on line, not in penalty area. You can't give a penalty. No, you're mistaken there, yeah, Big Head. The line is part of the penalty area. Anything <laughs> happening on it is counted as being inside the area. And a foul in the penalty area means it's a penalty. <laughs> well, since you were having a penalty, I may as well get me money's worth. <laughs> Red card, Bobby Despot, for continuous foul play. You're off. With 25 minutes and 42.2 seconds gone, it's a penalty. And Bobby Despot has been sent off for violent conduct. Wait a minute. The penalty taker must be identified in advance. Now, which of you's going to take it? I am. Now, that won't do. I want formal identification. I didn't bring my ID card. It's in my wallet. I think it's in my other pants. Wait, I found it. That means I can take the penalty. I have ID. You don't need an ID card, Third Bucket. I just need to know who's going to take the penalty. Look out, Jack the Popper's back. Now they'll have to abandon the game. <laughs> OK, hey, someone's stolen the ball again. We'd better get Sherlock Holmes on the case if we want to find out who's stealing all these balls. Let's have another ball, ball boy. Yeah, who, me? Oh, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> No goal. The ball deflated before it came into play. A new ball and take the kick again. Unless I'm very much mistaken, Watson, this is the work of Jack the Popper. Look, Holmes is getting away. What? Oi, I'm too smart for you, Mr Holmes. You haven't seen the last of me. Where are we going to get this penalty taken at last? He's dummied the keeper and sent it the wrong way. Well, it's about time. Where's it going? Joe Thudbucket puts the Beavers into the lead. And I would say the exploiters have it all to do now. It's 1-0 to the sporting eager beamers. Oh! Handball! Penalty for deliberate handball inside the penalty area. It's a penalty in the ninth second of the 31st minute. And it's the exploiters marksman Harry Scum to take the spot kick. No goal. I've already told you the ball must be kicked forward, not behind you or to the side. It's in the rules of the game, laddie. Oh, just a minute. You in the studio there. Rewind this card. Oh, I've got a question for Mac. <laughs> in this case, if they hadn't scored, or well, they couldn't take the penalty again, could they? Correct. It would be unfair to penalise the goalkeeper for the attacker's mistake, so the penalty would not be retaken. Stop this, then. Nice one. No goal. Since when? The penalty taker may only touch the ball once. If he touches it a second time without it being touched by another player, that's an indirect free kick to the opposition. And as far as I know, a post is not a player. Got it. Ha. Penalty. Penalty with the Sporting Eager Beavers goalkeeper Stanley Accrington penalised. Tell you what, McCutton, why don't I take the penalty here? It's where he was fouled. A penalty must always be taken from the penalty spot, and there are no exceptions, lad. So it's Harry Scum stepping up once more to try and score. He shoots, and it's a goal! Oh, we well done, lads! Come on, lads, don't get down, Archie. We've still got plenty of time. With the match level, both teams came out intent on winning in the second half and were attacking yeah. right from the off. That's a penalty for pushing an opponent off the ball in the penalty area. But it was only a little push. Oh, another one? Well, I did tell you this was where my ancestor sorted out the penalty rule. 17 minutes and 13.3 seconds into the second half and it's a penalty to the Beavers. It's Dribbler to take it. He approaches the ball and... Well, he's only tapped it. He blanked his pass into a teammate who shoots. And the Beavers are 2 one ahead. What a penalty! Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Matt Cotton! That was never a goal! He can't score a penalty like that! 
You're mistaken, Scab lad. The goal was valid. Let's look at it again. All the players were in the correct position. The ball was struck forwards and was hit by a second player who had been in the correct position when the ball was originally struck. Not a plot used often, but the goal is still valid. Stunned by that penalty, the exploiters resorted to their own ah! tactic. Ah! Accidental. This wasn't, though. Penalty and a red card. Punching an opponent and deliberate handball. You're off the pitch, lad. Another penalty. One of these exploiters going to learn. It's going to cost them the game. 89 minutes and 58.2 seconds. Tom Stryker to take this penalty. He shoots. Ah! It's a goal! to the eager beavers as the final whistle goes. What an exciting game. Yep. Now, two off. What a goal and what a great match for the incident, as they say. Well, it just goes to show there's more than one way of taking a penalty. So fair play triumph once again, which meant there was only one winner, and that was football. So, as you see, a penalty is an easy way to score a goal, laddie. It's awarded when there's a foul in the penalty area. Right, I'm on your wavelength, Mac. Carry on. Penalties are used in some competitions to determine the outcome of a game if it's ended in a draw after extra time, laddie. Each side takes five penalties, with both sides taking turns. If still level after five, they continue until one side misses and the other scores. Any player can take a penalty, including the goalkeeper, but they can only take one each, unless the whole team has already taken one. Now to the taking of penalties generally. They're not to be taken until the referee signals. The ball should be on the penalty spot 11 metres from the goal, the penalty taker having been identified and the other players at least 9.15 metres behind the ball. I know, it's in the rules of the game, right? Carry on, Mac. The penalty taker must kick the ball forward, not to the side or to the rear, and the ball is in play from the moment it's kicked. Anything else, Mick? The penalty taker can't touch it again until it's been touched by another player. So, if he hits the woodwork, say, and the ball comes back to him, and then he scores, well, the goal's got to be disallowed, right? Right, lad. It's good to see that despite visiting the age of invention, you're not inventing the rules. Other players cannot enter the area until the ball's been struck. If a side breaks the rules, the advantage will be given to their opponents. That's the only fair way, laddie. What do you mean, advantage? If a penalty taker's teammate comes into the area and the ball goes in, the penalty's retaken. Otherwise, Mick, the advantage would favour the attacking team. If the player entering the area is a defending player, then the goal stands. Now do you see? So there's no advantage for anyone who might cheat at a penalty. And what happens if players from both teams break the rules? In that case, the penalty would have to be taken again. Well, fellow footballers, I hope you've been listening and taking notes, because... Just a moment. If a ball is struck by a foreign object, such as a rock, the penalty must also be taken again. But if it's hit by an object after touching a post or a crossbar, play will be stopped and will resume with a drop ball at the point where the ball was struck by the said object. Is that clear, Mick? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and anyone can take a penalty, is that right? That's right, Mick. Even me. <laughs> See you soon. The 60s brought about many changes. Fair play reached the moon, the bikini became popular, secret agent movies were all the rage, and musical groups invented styles and rhythms that were new and original, as was their way of playing football. But not all equipment is allowed to be taken out onto the field, and some objects are even outlawed as they can be dangerous for opponents. Don't miss the next episode of Football Stories, where you'll learn the basic rules for players' equipment and where there'll be peace, love and goals galore. <whistles> OK, Mick, we're going to sing the fair play song. You take the high part. And you take the low part, and you'll be in Scotland before me. Well, I don't want to go, really.